and welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 9, 6, and 4. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle in general, you've come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'll be sharing some of my favorite resources for developing mindfulness in our homeschool, and I'm doing this video in collaboration with my new friend Melissa over at Dinner on a Bunsen Burner. Now, Melissa is a children's literature professor, and she has a series of excellent videos all about literature-based education, so if you're someone who's a fan of that, which I bet you are, definitely head on over to her channel and check out her videos. So as you can see here, we have a huge variety of mindfulness resources in our house. And this doesn't actually include all of the things I think that we use for mindfulness, but these are some of the ones that we use most frequently and some of the ones that we plan to use on a regular basis for the upcoming school year. So I'm gonna start out with these little cards. These are children's spirit animal cards and I actually purchased these off Amazon. These are made by Dr. Stephen D. Farmer and they are for ages three and above. There's 24 cards and there's also a little booklet that comes inside for you to read about the cards. So, so the kit comes with 24 of these little cards and each card has this bunny picture in the forest as its facing page, but on the reverse side, each one has a different animal and a little message from that animal. So as you can see, you have the buffalo, the hummingbird, cheer up, the eagle, do the right thing, crow, believe in magic. And I'll just flip through these and I'll tell you how we use them. So basically what we do in our school is every day, even if we're not doing seat work before we run out the door or something, we try to pick a card randomly for each person. So I fan out the deck and they get to each pick a card and then one of them will fan out the deck for me and I'll pick a card and we'll read from the little booklet about what kind of characteristic we might want to work on today or what my kind of little message the animal card has for us today. So the cards are very sweet. Some, some of them are aspirational like dream, but some of them are a little bit more instructional like take your time or do secret favors for others. So what I like about the little guidebook is one, it fits into the box so it all stays together. And two, it's in alphabetical order, so it's always easy to find which one you're looking for. So for example, in the book, the horse section is about trusting your feelings, and it says it's so tempting sometimes to just go along with something, and then it talks about like when a friend tells you to do something that isn't um, correct. Other times, something just doesn't feel right in your stomach, and so you decide to listen to your feelings, like when someone you meet makes your stomach tight or upset for no obvious reason, so that you keep your distance. This is called your intuition. Um, and it talks about regardless of whether your feelings basically are good or bad, you know, listen to them. Those sensations in your body, especially in your stomach or gut, can be a clue as to what your real feelings are. And it goes on and then it gives you a little activities that you might want to try. So in your journal, you can write about when you trusted your feelings. You can develop your intuition by sitting quietly in nature and basically meditating and breathing. It also says to take responsibility for your feelings and don't blame others. So I like how it explains these things very simply to kids and it gives them like short examples of what the card might refer to in their real life. So I really love it. it. I wouldn't call this book entirely secular. If you go to the back of the book, there's a section of helping your child use these cards and it talks about how using divination tools of any kind are a conduit for communicating with spirit or God. Of course, how you use these cards is really up to you and whether you use it in this fashion. Um, as prescribed is up to you. But I like that whether or not um, you are religious, these cards are not religious in and of themselves. They are very much about good character traits, I think, that you would want any child to develop. So you can use them in a religious sense or not, as is your preference. The next cards I have here to show you are Mindful Kids. It's 50 Mindfulness Activities for Kindness, Focus, and Calm. It is for ages 4 to 104, and I completely agree with that. I think you could start even a little bit earlier. Now, this kit actually comes with 50 different mindfulness activities. You have this little booklet. So what is mindfulness? And that's a really good place to start when you start talking about mindfulness with your kids. Mindfulness means paying attention with kindness and patience to what's going on inside and outside of you right now. So the term monkey mind means feeling restless, agitated, and distracted. A goal of mindfulness practice is to calm the constant chatter of the monkey mind. And it talks about how you can focus your attention, breathe, being patient even when things are hard. 
and they have five different categories of cards here if you can see they have start your day to stay grounded find calm to learn to ride the waves and handle tricky or challenging emotions focus strengthen your mind open your heart accepting life with kindness and relax and rest so unwind your tangles um, it talks about how anyone can learn mindfulness so you can do modifications in case you can't do some of these moves it talks about mindful breaths and mindful breathing. There's different mindful tips, like you don't have to close your eyes if you don't want to. You can lie down if you feel bored. That's totally okay. I really liked the booklet, actually. I thought it was very worthwhile just as a mindful tool in and of itself. When you look at the cards, they are very beautiful. Now, we keep them separated out into the different categories. So if you start off with the green ones, they're about starting your day. So there's mindful breaths. The front has this beautiful illustration, and then the back will have very clear directions. So steps that you can take. So sit mindfully with your spine straight. Every morning, notice your breathing. Take three soft, slow, mindful breaths. I like to go through these in order. We actually went through them this past year, but I like to start off and sort of mix them up. So like if we do a mindful breaths one one day, we'll talk about how we can incorporate that into our morning practice. But then we might move on to the second category on the next day when we talk about this, about finding calm. So tummy ride, breathe in. So this one my kids really like actually. This is where you put a stuffed animal on your belly and you breathe in and out. And you watch that animal ride up and down on your tummy like it's an ocean wave. And then it's just a way of helping children focus their breath and focus their breathing and not get bored at the same time. There's other really good activities for throughout the day like sharp eyes. So you can take mindful breaths before you eat. Sniff the food. Look at it. Notice its texture. Slowly chew. Um, and you notice a sensation. So just that act of slowing down. I really like these cards. I think they give you a way of having a concrete set of steps that can make you feel more aware. So this one is swaying trees. Imagine that you are in the tree in the wind. If you're looking for some sort of activity cards for brain breaks and stuff, something to calm down a child that gets a little bit overexcited or a little bit restless at the table during homeschool, for example, this is a really nice set of cards just for that. So I really do recommend these mindful kids. And if you haven't tried any mindfulness activities before, I think this set is a great place to start. It's very contained. It's easy to do these activities in just a few minutes every day. Sitting Still Like a Frog is a book and a CD. And they're simple mindfulness practices to help your child deal with anxiety, improve concentration, and handle difficult emotions. So you can see here there's this little CD here that I always keep back there so I don't lose it. Um, the book itself is organized in clear chapters, 10 clear chapters, and it goes on with an introduction, parenting with greater mindfulness, attention starts with breath, training your attention muscle out of your head and into your body, weathering the storm inside, handling difficult feelings, the conveyor belt of worries, it's good to be kind, patience, trust, and letting go. I really like this book. This was probably my first introduction to teaching mindfulness to children. And it's just a simple, quick book to read. It talks about different um, situations about why it's hard for us sometimes to be mindful, what the importance of mindfulness is. I found this book to be more helpful for me to understand why mindfulness matters than for sharing it with the children. However, they do have exercises throughout the book that you can use with your children and the CD itself is really helpful because the exercises are guided. So you can just pop in the CD and listen to it and do the activity. Um, it's really clear to see what the CD exercises are in the book because she'll mark them out with a little CD symbol and then describe them for you. Things like this are really helpful too. We've done this before in our classroom where we'll have a little thermometer picture or some sort of gradient like this is how I feel now when I'm feeling good like a mood gradient. Um, when I start to get really angry, I go up in color or in number. Different kids will respond to different types of things. So you can make a personal weather report. How do you feel right now? I like this because I think this is around the time I came up with that saying that I use with my kids all the time. Feelings and fights are the weather. Love is the sky. Love is always there. We love you always. But, you know, feelings and fights... They come and they go and they will come again. And that's an important thing to be aware of with mindfulness. So I did like this book a lot. Um, I like that the 
the meditations are recorded for you and you know it's a really easy open and go kind of book to start out with as well the next book I want to share is an older book it's from the 70s by Joy Wilt some of you might be familiar with this series um I have the whole series because I got it from eBay a long time ago. And they're all books about emotions and family life and just things that kids encounter. This one is about handling your ups and downs and I found it to be really ahead of its time in talking about how everyone feels all over the place. That feelings really are cyclical and all right to have. Good feelings, bad feelings. Uh, this book does a really good job of letting kids know it's okay to feel all sorts of things, happiness, but also jealousy, selfishness, guilt, all of these feelings are normal feelings, you know, um, feeling so see, it'll have little uh, exercises here. Like, have you ever been jealous? Some of the people you've been jealous of the book really does a good job of showing kids that a huge variety of feelings are normal and then also telling them about how they can deal with those negative feelings, how they can overcome them and transform them into something that might be more positive. So it says pretending that nothing is wrong is not a good way to handle your grief. You know, it talks very clearly about how it can help to tell people about your feelings, to share your sorrows and, you know, just the things that make you feel uncomfortable and alone. Um, and just other things that you can do about it. It talks about anxiety. So like nervousness about getting tonsils out, just any kind of, um, thing that makes you afraid, etc. So I really, really like this book. It's really an easy read. Little kids like it too. The cartoons are really engaging and it's a very positive, proactive type of book because it talks about, you know, finding out what you're feeling, learning what's causing your feelings, deciding what you should do, and do what you decided you should do. So every person has ups and downs, and that's normal and healthy. I really appreciate this entire series by Joy Wilt. I'll do a video on it um, later if you guys want to see the rest of the series, but this one was just a really nice, simple book, and even my four-year-old really likes it. This is a book called My Day is Ruined, A Story for Teaching Flexible Thinking by Brian Smith. And uh, my son really related to this book and really liked it. It's about a boy who has a canceled ball game and he really wanted to go to the ball game that day and he's very upset that that happened and he just can't quite deal with his disappointment. So his teacher and his mom help him to practice flexible thinking. So just stretching your brain and like, you know, trying to see how we can get over a disappointment or a frustration and and have a good day in spite of it. So take a deep breath, realize some things are out of your control, change your plan, accept the change. Um, if you have a child who has a hard time with, with changes in plans or just disappointments in general, I thought this was a really nice picture book read aloud. And my son does ask to be read it very often, even at the age of nine. Coping Skills for Kids Workbook. This has over 75 coping strategies to help kids deal with stress, anxiety, and anger. Now, I have not worked in this workbook yet. Um, it is written by a mental health counselor, and she started a website called Encourage Play, which is basically about learning social skills through play. The book is organized in such a way that you have um, an introduction and then calming coping skills like breathing, meditation, yoga, grounding techniques, other calming techniques, distraction coping skills, physical coping skills like, you know, brain breaks and physical movement, processing coping skills like talking about feelings and a feelings thermometer, etc. And then expressing those thoughts and feelings like through journaling, etc. I really um, think this is a book that's better suited to kids once they know how to write, unless you want to stick to the beginning of the book first. Um, but I like that it was organized in a very stepwise fashion. So you can start off with talking about the autonomic nervous system, how we can go into the flight, fight, or freeze mode. And then there's also the parasympathetics, which help us rest and digest. I think teaching the kids the science of how our brains and bodies work is really helpful for when they get stressed out so that they know that nothing abnormal is happening. Your body is working exactly the way it should when you start to feel worried and tense and stressed. Your body is trying to help you. It thinks there's an emergency. And your job is to teach your body that there isn't an emergency right now. And we're going to teach them 
body that by breathing deeply, by trying to do other things that give our body signals to calm down. And the more you practice it, the more the children realize that this can actually work. And that gives them a sense of control and power over those moments where their emotions spiral out of control. So I'm just going to flip through this book really fast. Again, we haven't used this book yet. But I do like how it focuses both on some of the science as well as some of the the actual concrete techniques that you can do. So you have grounding techniques. It talks about progressive muscle relaxation, drinking water, tracing patterns can be really, really comforting. Like research has shown recently about all the coloring books, etc. So these are all really um, good activities for kids to learn. The physical coping skills, again... This book has not too much and not too little. So here it has some things that you can make on your own. I also don't like the idea of giving balloons to children though, because that, that latex rubber is actually can be really dangerous when, um, it breaks and then they try to chew on it or bite it, etc. So I don't really recommend that. So here's like an anger thermometer. If you guys want to take a look at an example of one where, you know, if you're just a little bit angry or whatever, you sigh or growl, you can get a drink of water, you can squeeze Play-Doh, you can, you know, punch a pillow, whatever. Um, And then when you get up to here, these are kinds of some of the techniques that you can take. And your kid can make that type of thermometer on their own. But I like the idea of a book like this because it allows you to address mindfulness in a much more stepwise fashion with your kids. This is a book that I have done a dedicated review on before, and I will try to remember to link that video in the description box down below. This is Do Nice, Be Kind, Spread Happy, Acts of Kindness for Kids. So this is one of those books where we try to look at it at least once or twice a month and just figure out what we can do to spread happiness and kindness in the world. And so they have a lot of simple activities and some more involved activities. Like for example, here, I love this activity and we actually did it last year where we just took a bunch of sticky notes and we wrote happy messages like, you know, today's going to be great. Don't work too hard. Um, You're awesome. I love you. Look up and, you know, notice that bird in the tree, things like that. And we stuck them in different places, like on different people's mailboxes and around the neighborhood, etc. And that was fun. Some of the other things are, you know, um, leaving a note telling someone in your family why they are special to them, making a, a playlist for someone, you know, straight back to the 90s. Um, there's ads for the ha- for happiness where you can place an ad on the local store to spread a message of kindness. We haven't tried this actually, but it's very similar. There's also things like you um, pay for the person behind you in line, ideas of going to uh, retirement homes, etc. Trying to be kind on purpose to your little brother and sister, trying to make happy signs in a traffic jam to hold up on windows like you're nearly there or hello or smiley face. Uh, there's so many different things that we can do easily to bring little bits of joy to other people's lives. And I think that is part of mindfulness to come out of oneself in a way and to create surprises of happiness for other people. So I really do think that this is a great addition to a mindfulness curriculum. Last but not least is something I'm really excited to share. And this is the sitting together Family-Centered Curriculum on Mindfulness, Meditation, and Buddhist Teachings by Sumi London Kim. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right, but she is the Buddhist chaplain at Duke University and the Minister for Buddhist Families of Durham, or at least she was in, I think, 2017 when this curriculum was published. I really like the idea of having a set curriculum that walks me through a 36-week program for teaching my children meditation and mindfulness. I like all these other resources that I showed you as well, but I think after a couple years of using resources like that, we've gotten to the point in our family where we're ready for a more structured type of curriculum that'll help us all develop these skills together in an orderly fashion. The way this book is arranged, you can buy these books separately. Um, The children's lesson plans and the activity book really do merge well together, but you don't need them both. And the adult study guide is certainly not something you definitely need, though I think it's very helpful, particularly if you're new to meditation yourself. So the children's lesson plans are organized in such a way that it emphasizes that if we can learn together about being more aware of our internal and our external circumstances and to control our response to it, 
um, we can improve our family life. So right here you can see she starts off with family life is the cradle, the foundation, and the crucible for human beings to grow in body, heart, and spirit. So when our families are tended with mindfulness and compassion, our lives and the lives of our children flourish. I love how um, the approach is in this book. The units in the student guide and the parent guide align perfectly. So you have unit one on meditation, unit two on kindness, which talks about anger and forgiveness, etc. Unit three on ethics, unit four on character, unit five on nature. And then there's additional exercises. It's important to note that this book is designed to be used with other storybooks, etc. that deal with mindfulness. So before you do each of the lessons, it's very helpful to know what book is necessary for that lesson. For example, in the first section, you have breathing meditation. It'll highlight what we're going to do. So deep breaths help us calm down when we're upset. Puppy mind and how to train it by following our breath. There's also a song which you can find online on the website for this curriculum, which is actually marked incorrectly in this book. And I should point that out because I believe in the book it's printed as a .org site. And in reality, it's a .net site. Unfortunately, I cannot find where they have that. But just know that if you can't find the site, try it as a .net and you will be able to find it. So here you have... Um, the story that you have to read that week and a little description of it. And then you have the um, questions for it, the discussion, the meditation activity. Then the activity for uh, the lesson is pinwheels and you do pinwheel breaths. And there are two pages in the activity book that correspond to this lesson. And I believe they are this one, which is about the story ZG right there and the pinwheel template. And both of these are called out in the lesson guide, so they're easy to find. Yeah. There's a game that she suggests you play, freeze tag, and then there's um, a little section where she clarifies what pages you need from the activity book. I'm just gonna do a really quick flip through of this, and I can do a dedicated review on this curriculum in a few months when I have more familiarity with it. But I just wanna show you the basic layout of it. It's really easy reading. Here in the back, you have the songbook. And so you have all the lyrics here and to hear the melody, you would have to go online. So yes, here it is, mindfulfamilies.org. So that's actually mindfulfamilies.net, I believe. I'll flip through really fast for you the activity book. So there's plenty of coloring pages. There's also some activities like word searches, quilt templates. I believe there's some mazes. There's a mask template there. And the adult study guide is more text heavy, but it does explain to you sort of the theories behind meditation, why controlling your breath might help, etc. And I'm excited to do this curriculum alongside my children because, as we all know, one of the best things about homeschool is it affords us the opportunity to learn alongside them. And when you learn alongside them, I think it shows them that one, lifelong learning is possible, and two, that no one is perfect and that everybody's learning this together. There's no end point to mindfulness. There's no perfect um, <laughs> end place that we're trying to get to. We're just trying to practice these skills to get better and better at it as we grow. So these are just some of the resources that I think might be helpful to you guys. If you want me to elaborate on any one of them or how we use them, please just ask me in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help out. So I hope those resources will be helpful to you guys as you plan out the rest of your coming homeschool year. And be sure to check out Melissa's video over at Dinner on a Bunsen Burner because I am excited to see what kind of resources she has to share. As always, I really do value your time and I appreciate that you spend some of it with me. And I wish you the very best day.